Hi, my last video was a guide for using DI or line isolation boxes with the Guitar Amp Modeler, but that video only takes into account proper gain staging. I didn't cover how easy it is to use a line isolation box in what some engineers might call the incorrect way. I did mention in that video several times how a line level signal sent to the front of house may result in the engineer saying that the signal's too hot. Now I'm going to demonstrate what that means. I won't be using the Iridium in this video because it's not with me, but this really isn't about any particular guitar amp modeler, so I'll use a HX Stomp instead. I'll still use an unbalanced quarter inch TS connector just like I did with the Iridium. I've also chosen to include the Focusrite Scarlet audio interface because it has a cool visual to show what's happening to the signal after the input. We'll go ahead and dive in here. Let's say all you have to start with is a guitar amp modeler and you need to plug it into a recording interface or mixer. You're going to look for whatever quarter inch input is on your interface channel and plug it in there. So you plug in and depending on the features of your guitar amp modeler's output and your recording interface or mixer input, you may or may not be able to achieve a good strong signal. If your line input includes the ability to boost the signal, as the Scarlet does, you'll probably do fine. Then sometime later you decide you want to step up your game. You get a DI box because you know that a DI will convert the unbalanced quarter inch into a balanced XLR. Balanced connections are good. They'll remove noise interference picked up over a long cable run, and XLR connectors are just more robust. Now at this point you may also know that using a DI box reduces the level of the signal to what's called mic level a very quiet, low impedance signal that requires a mic preamp to bring the signal up before processing it. Or perhaps you don't know that, but what you do know is you see an XLR connector coming from the DI box and an XLR connector going into the interface, so naturally that's how you're going to plug it in. Plugging in an XLR connector to the Scarlet automatically activates the mic preamp on that channel. And now you have all the benefits of a balanced mic level connection. If you were having any trouble before using the line input on your interface, this has definitely fixed your problem. And even better, this is how you would typically hook up to the front of house mixer at a gig from your modeler's pedal board. So you have that base covered now as well. So all mic preamps have a control for gain or level. On the Scarlet, if it shows green while the signal is being played, you have a clean signal. There's headroom to spare. If you turn it up, at some point it'll be orange, which means the headroom has just started to run out in the preamp and the peaks are pushing past the available clean threshold. As you continue to increase gain, it'll eventually turn red, meaning really severe distortion is happening. Now moving on to line isolation boxes, they look a lot like DI boxes with pretty much the same connectors and usage. Luckily for the demo, I'm using this bit of kit by Walrus Audio that has both a DI and LI mode, so I can show you this without even switching to a different box. The first thing to know is that the only real difference between DI and LI is instead of putting out mic level signal, an LI box puts out a hotter line level signal. There's no active electronics amplifying the signal. In reality, the LI box is just putting out the same level that's coming in instead of reducing it down to mic level. I've activated LI mode and now what? There are still XLR connectors coming from the box and the recording interface has XLR connectors so naturally that's what you're still going to plug into. Some professional interfaces do have XLR connectors for line input by the way and that's what you'd plug into in that case but let's just assume you're using one that doesn't like the Scarlet. Remember when I said plugging an XLR into the Scarlet automatically activates the mic preamp? I've just plugged a hotter line level signal into a mic preamp only because the connectors are physically compatible. It's not dangerous to do this, they're both audio signals, but now the mic preamp is taking in a much hotter signal than before. You can see how quickly the mic preamp goes into the range of distortion. If you are at a gig, this is what the mixing engineer means if they say that your signal's too hot. In some cases, because the signal is so hot, he may not even have any room to maneuver, and he'll ask you to turn down something. To sum this up, I've shown that even though you might have a line isolation box that uses an XLR connector, and the front of house is giving you an XLR drop, it doesn't automatically mean that the signal your gear is sending is going to be the best range for that input. 
if you can send either mic level or line level, it's my advice that you ask the engineer what will work best for gain staging. The chances are in most gigs that it's going to be mic level, but there may be a choice. If you do only have line level to send, it's good to let the front of house know. You don't want to be overdriving the inputs, and the engineer is only trying to make sure that you'll sound good when he says that you need to turn something down, or he even needs to add a DI box. I have a lot more information on this topic, including all the ins and outs of running guitar amp modelers with DIs or line isolators, so you might want to check out my prior video on the subject.